Good morning. This is Susie from Trauma Informed Parent. I am very grateful to have with me this morning Dr. Bessel Vanderpool, author of the best selling and seminal book, The Body Keeps the Score Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. Thank you for joining me, Bessel. Very grateful to have you with me. I want to get right to it. I'm um, seeing a lot of information out there about how to help children, young adults, and teenagers through this, this crisis, but I'm not seeing a lot of information about how to specifically help young people who have experienced trauma or adverse childhood experiences. Can you speak to that? I would call the current situation sort of a pre-traumatic situation. Namely, what makes something traumatic is being unable to do anything, unable to move, and unable to take action. And so all the conditions are here to sort of stir that stuff up. So to my mind, in order to, to deal with the old imprint of trauma, you need to do the opposite. So you need to act, you need to move, you need to do things. Now you need to actively engage your body. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very difficult with the lockdown, but many people, including myself actually, are still in a position, we can go hiking and we can go uh, really exercise our body. Uh, doing yoga is very good, uh, putting up uh, records and dancing together and making music together, uh, very useful to just keep that body going and keep the f body alive and active. Uh, the other thing that I think is terribly important to deal with trauma also, and in general actually, is that trauma is about unpredictability. Uh, so that there is, you don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important for us to make schedules and to keep, there's a tendency on the part of um, traumatized people to just stay up all night and to sit in front of TV and sort of be very passive. It's very important to say, I'm going to go to sleep at 11 or I'm going to get up at eight or 8.30, whenever you get up and I'm going to make breakfast and then I'm going to do something and then I'm going to have lunch and to really divide up the day into manageable chunks. Yes. Uh, I think to my mind, it's also very important to do things to look forward to. Uh, so say on at four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to call my college roommate or mm. I'm going to call my children or my parents or something. And to really know a predictability, a schedule, a regularity to life that makes life, uh, that organizes into, it into chunks. Uh, keep moving and, and keep a schedule. Is, is there a telltale difference between how a child who has suffered trauma um, would handle this compared to one who hasn't? Oh, I think all kids will have difficulty with this. You know, like, <laughs> it, uh, again, ha having timeouts. I think, you, you know, I know some kindergarten teachers who are my teachers. Because, you know, they work with kids, you know, in the inner city who have hardly any frontal lobe, who get exposed to trauma all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're just spectacular. And what kindergarten teachers do is they, again, divide things up. Now we go to do this. And when the big hand is at that, we're going to do something else. And we sing together. And we move together. And I think this whole issue of being physically engaged with each other, singing, time out, being still at some points, learning to breathe together, uh, getting into sync with each other, and having time out. Mm -hmm. A time that you're by yourself, and you sit over there, and this time for creativity. And of course, there's lots of stuff out there that I see all the time in the net. I had to post it on my uh, Facebook site, The Body Keeps Score. I post things there all the time. Kids to uh, games to, to play with kids, ways of being engaged with kids, doing things, making noises together, becoming quiet, learning how to control your breath, all these things. Would you give the same advice to parents and caregivers? There was a, um, a parent who commented yesterday that she, there was an article about how this can be trigger uh, and resurrect uh, adults trauma from the past, but 
she couldn't read the article. She said it was, she just was so overwhelmed with anxiety. It was too much. And she was asking for just some quick tips to help her because her trauma had been resurrected because of well, Lisa Sky posted a beautiful uh, video on my website on how to calm yourself down. Yeah. And my website is bestofvelicals.com or traumaresearchfoundation.com. And there's this 10 minute tape on how to really calm yourself down. I can highly recommend it. It's a, it's a beautiful tape of okay. the work that she does to work with your body to calm your body down. Thank you. There also are websites about meditation. Uh, again, I post this on my website, uh, on my Facebook site. A lot, I'll post them on my website also today or tomorrow. Uh, uh, yoga classes, meditation classes. Uh, uh, very much, this is the time to learn to be still and to deal with that heartache and that gut-wrenching sensation that tend to come up when our life is unstructured and dangerous. Yes, particularly for teenagers. I don't want to even give people advice about what to do with teenagers. Like, you know, <laughs> I've had teenagers for a long time, and I would say, be as respectful as you can be, be as limit-setting as you can be, uh, and good luck to you. <laughs> yes. Has anything about all this surprised you and, and what you've seen and how people... Uh, so now, no, we all live in our little worlds. Okay? And so we don't know, particularly right now, we certainly don't know what's happening in a larger scale. But up to now, I've been really impressed with how, how much generosity I see in people, how much outreach I see in people, how much creativity I see. And certainly, in some ways, you're interviewing me at an early stage. And this, we basically only have been on lockdown for two weeks. I think we have at least another two weeks to go, uh, depending on how when we become a sane society that actually takes all this stuff seriously. And that indeed we have made America great again. We are now the leaders in infections in the world. And so that's because of our uh, approach. And if we really are going to take this seriously, we have to buckle down and do it. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be harder. As the, as the time goes on. Great. One last question. Um, so maybe you should call me again in two weeks and see what have you learned in the last two weeks. You know, I will do that. I will do that. One more question. Um, Long-term impact. Um, obviously, there are people who, who may not be suffering any signs of trauma now or stress, but how do you see it playing out as kids get older over, over the years? I am very curious about it. Huh? I think there's an immediate issue of the virus. There's an almost immediate issue of economic consequences, which are going to be huge. And the third issue are the psychological consequences. And I'm just sitting still to notice at this point. I don't want to predict what's going to happen. But this is certainly, uh, I call this a pre-traumatic environment. The conditions are there for serious mental problems. Uh, the data coming out of Spain and France right now is that domestic violence has gone up yes. by about 37, 40% in those two countries. High numbers. So if that's true over there, it's true over here also. So the issue of violence and terror is very serious. I think setting, I think every home should have a, um, an area that is your area. Maybe my chair over there is my timeout chair, if you have a very small apartment. But we all need a private space and that nobody is allowed to come into the private space. It's very important like that, that. that people are, learn to be safe with each other. And this is not a good time to be locked up with somebody who has temper problems. Definitely. Thank you, Basco. I really appreciate okay. it. Very good luck to you. Talk right. to you again. Check in with you, yes. Okay. My love to Alicia. Okay, take care of yourself. Okay, bye. Bye bye.